I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making me. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody take the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. So we're going to just move forward. I wanted to give you a flashback on that. And now we have another flashback update in the saga continues when we talk about Miss Fanny Willis. OK, so we got another update and I'm going to give you my perspective. We did talk about the disqualification here and the outcome and why I think certain things happen the way that uh, the, act, the lawyer actually represented the case. I don't believe it was strong enough, but she did show the character of Fannie Willis and the underlying things that I have been talking about for months that goes on in um, Fulton County. It's pretty crooked. So we have an update about Fulton County and also about the judge. So judge allows Trump and co-defendant to appeal order, letting Fannie Willis continue on the 2020 election case. So to me, this is saying to me that this particular judge did not want to be responsible for um, making the decision to pull her off the case. One, because what we talked about, I believe that they had some type of connection. She, she either he worked under her or with her at some apparent point in their career and also the, the foundations of the case. So, you know, by opening this up, allowing um, the co-defendants, other co-defendants in this case, and there's a whole lot of them to come up with something to follow through with this discontinuation of Fannie Willis. So let's see where that leads us. Cause you see the, the judge is trying to play both sides to me. He left the door open because as I said, he did not want to be responsible, but he does know that there is some type of corruption, something that was not right that Fannie did. Now, Fannie Willis really reveals her greatest crime. Now, Missy has finally made a statement. And this is this is this is what really makes me feel some type of way because you could have just took a whole glass of just shut up. You you got you know away with it right now. And but you want to you want to put fire onto the flame and show more of your arrogance to me. This is what she shows me. So um, Fannie Willis gives um, her comment on Saturday to Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis made her first public comment um, since the judge ruling that she could remain on Donald Trump uh, case. But we already know it was either her or her boyfriend. OK, and this is her response. I don't feel my reputation needs to be reclaimed. Let's say it for the record. I'm not embarrassed by anything I have done. I guess my greatest crime is that I have a relationship with the man, but that's not something that I find embarrassing in any way. You know, I pause because that man was married. OK, you don't feel embarrassed about that. And he still is married. How about that? And I know that I have not done anything that's illegal. Now, it's not illegal, for say, that you go to jail, but in Georgia, they like to charge, charge people with statues instead of real actual crime, victimless crime. And under that, you did a crime, okay? You didn't follow the guidelines of your job, and that is, one, to disclose any personal relationship with anybody, not, not, not only just employees, but contractors as well, and then the, the money that you was receiving, I mean, well, the gifts and the trinkets, okay, in relations to that. If it wasn't a problem, why didn't you disclose it? Why didn't he disclose it to his wife or to the wife lawyer in the divorce proceedings? So obviously something was not done right. And, and allegedly, they allegedly, because the judge was like, don't go there. It's illegal to cheat on your wife. Adultery is illegal in America. Okay. 
So, and I know that I have not done anything that's illegal. Willis spoke on CNN, okay? After the East Egg Hunt in College Park, Georgia, said in response later on Saturday, Trump leads the defense counsel for the case. Steve Shadow posted X formal Twitter on, on, on X, which is Twitter, in response to the district attorney comment. Apparently, Judge Scott McFay warning to Willis in his disqualification order about talking about the case in public forum is simply being ignored. Does that surprise anyone? No, because when she went into that church and talked about it, they, they said it in the case. These are things that prosecutors are not supposed to do. They're not supposed to talk about, you know, proceedings, um, especially in the middle of a high state case like this, um, calling people criminals. Um, you have a 90% arrest. I mean, you know, um, winning record and these people are racist just add a few to the flame making the proceedings already start in a public platform and that's something that she was not supposed to do so we'll see if anybody actually appeals this decision made by the judge because as i told you i believe that the judge just wanted to get out of the hot seat the judge didn't want to have nothing to do with that he was like man i'm gonna play both sides I know this woman. She taught me some things. I have to work with her in this building. And that was another thing. These proceedings took place in a building that she works in. That she, she's literally the district attorney there. They didn't even try to pull it outside of Fulton County to make it at least seem unbiased. And this is what goes on out here. Nobody even said that, even thought about that. Why would it be taking place? She literally ran down from her office in the middle of proceedings while watching it. And that was known by what she said. That's how she got there on time, even though she was not supposed to actually testify. That's what they were in the middle of saying, trying to get her not like, no, she don't need to da da da. And here she come lollygagging in the court because she was watching it. The whole thing was crooked. The whole thing was ridiculous. So now we have um, one more update about Miss Fanny, because as we talked about, there are things going on in the Fulton County Court um, jail and the courts that needs to be handled, that needs to be put out there on Front Street. They talked about the arrest record. They talked about clearing the books in Fulton County. We know how dangerous Fulton County Jail is, how many inmates have died last year, over 23. We showed you numerous reports. And now we have Fulton County DA Fanny Willis sued over incarcerated people waiting in jail without indictment. Now, I would assume this would happen. You know why? Because she did a live, well, she did an interview, very articulate, you know, pay attention to the numbers. This is what I did. This is what I do. You know, she laid it out there and I had to give her respect, but she gave a little bit too much information. There was still a good number of inmates that has been sitting in Fulton County over two years, three years that she allegedly states the reason why they're sitting in limbo without even having um, been indicted because they were not mentally stable. So that leaves them in limbo. And in all regards, it seemed like they were indefinitely locked up until they can be proven to be um, able to stand trial, which that is unconstitutional. So I don't know if some of these cases has to do with that, but there was a good number of cases that she even mentioned that people were sitting in Fulton County. So what ended up happening is that you'll get arrested and you're waiting to see a judge. The judge is already backed up. So you didn't really, really get formally, formally indicted on the charges. You literally just did for arrest. This is all suspected because when you're arrested without being actually seeing a judge and getting the charges put on you and getting a court date, you're literally still being presented with these charges by police. You see what I'm saying? So that gray area, that's why it's a short time from when they lock you up to when they have to put you in front of the judge because other than that, they're literally just holding you based on speculations. OK, it's supposed to be proceedings that supposed to move forward. And that's what's not happening in Fulton County in some cases. So let's listen to this. The Atlanta nonprofit Bar um, Barrel Business Foundation is suing Fulton County D.A. Fannie Willis for allegedly failing to inform the judge when some uh, someone is held in jail on felony charges without being indicted for longer than 45 days. Felony charges. Now, like I said, she said these felony charges include people who are mentally unstable. 
But let's keep, let's listen to what they're saying. So the Atlanta Nonprofit Burial Business Foundation is suing um, Fulton County DA Fannie for allegedly filing a uh, Felon to inform judges when someone is held in jail on felony charges without being indicted for longer than 45 days. A report last year by the American Civil Liberties Unit found at one point more than a third of people in Fulton County Jail fit that description. A third, okay? Julian Clark is an attorney with the ACLU, which along with the ACLU of Georgia is representing the nonprofit in lawsuit. He spoke with GB, I mean, GPB, Peter. Okay, so this is a short transcript. Let me see, can I play some of this for you? Instead of me reading through the transcript, but I think they have it. This is All Things Considered on GPB. I'm Peter Biello. The Atlanta nonprofit Bard Business Foundation helps formerly incarcerated people and is now suing Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis for allegedly failing to inform a judge when someone is held in jail on felony charges without being indicted for longer than 45 days. Mm. A report last year by the American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, found at one point more than a third of people at Fulton County Jail fit that description. Julian Clark is an attorney with the ACLU, which, along with the ACLU of Georgia, is helping the nonprofit in its lawsuit. Welcome to All Things Considered. Thank you, Peter. So your study found uh, last year that hundreds of people are waiting in jail without an indictment. Mm -hmm. When you asked Fulton County why these people were waiting so long, what did they say? So um, we specifically sent in a records request um, that asked for information about it, but we never asked directly any officials in the county why why people are being held. What did they say in response to that information request? So we specifically requested whether they were complying with um, a court rule, which is subject of the lawsuit. Um, and they responded that they have no information that is relevant to our request, which suggests to us that they are not in compliance with that rule. Mm. Otherwise, they would have had something to show you. Exactly. Okay. So why is it important for a judge to know when an individual is kept in jail for that amount of time without an indictment? The reason why it's essential to know is that uh, Fulton County Jail now and for a long time has been experiencing overcrowding. There's terrible conditions in the jail. People have died. Dozens of people have died over the last couple of years. Yep. And right now, given those conditions, uh, if there's anyone that's in the jail that hasn't been convicted or the judge has an opportunity to expedite their case processing. It's essential that the judge be aware of that. Is this unique to Fulton County or is this going on elsewhere in Georgia? So our investigation was primarily focused on uh, Fulton County, but our understanding is that this is likely something that's happening all over the state. It's well known that throughout the state, there's a shortage of uh, public defenders and there aren't enough judges to uh, quickly handle all the cases that are presented to them. So even if the judges in Fulton County were informed, what could they what could the system possibly do after that point given the state's limited resources? The chief judge as the the head court administrator has the authority to bring in other judges, whether mm -hmm. retired or judges who are in other jurisdictions to help expedite the, the court's docket. So and let's pause right there real quick, because Nathan Wade was an acting judge. They both were acting judges at one point. And Nathan Wade, they asked him about his judging duties, and he's like a PRN judge. So what I hear here is that this is a foundation for the new prosecution review board prosecutor let's say prosecutor review board that has been established and signed into bill by government kent just the other day has something to be looking into and that is her not doing her job and that's not only about the funding that's one thing they're gonna look at how she's spending now they're gonna talk about her communication how she's moving prisoners through jail they're gonna go in on this lady she has opened a can of worms um and all i can say is hey if you want trump they want you now so you're playing chess you gotta be you gotta be ready you gotta be a tough cookie and obviously she felt like she is no apologies i didn't do anything wrong all i did was have a relationship with a married man ex-married because she won't admit to that
I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making me. You know, nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.